Hello and welcome to Talking in Stations, a show about EVE Online. I'm your host, Abby Rova, and I'm here with some of the crew from Talking in Stations. Uh, with me here tonight is Rich Richman. Good afternoon, good morning. Uh, I am now back in business Rich after spending about a week, how do I say, underneath a car. So I do need to be caught up on things that have happened just today, now that I'm back in gear yeah yeah great great to have you back and uh also with us tonight is shen hello hello so um we're just gonna run through a bit of the news and uh some stuff that came up during the week or in the last few days so i mean one big thing that happened uh, and dropped today was on it's not live in Tranquility just yet, but it went up on CC, is a video to accompany um, the new player experience that we saw come out on CC last week. So if, you, if you're not aware, we had um, a CC uh, update for the new player experience. We have the AI or uh, this new Corp Air and a whole new updated tutorial experience. Um, and it looked fantastic. It played fantastic. But at the time when you started a new character, just before this uh, introduction, there was this video. Um, I don't know if anyone here saw it, but it was like really bad. It was like this very low quality video. Um, it was like clearly a placeholder. So now that placeholder has been like replaced with the real video. So that went up and it's really cool. Um, I'll drop a link to it here in chat. And if you want, we can watch it together. New Eden, a universe brimming with possibility and rife with adventure. Only the most intrepid capsuleers can conquer its many wonders. Do you have what it takes to become one with the machine? To explore the far reaches of space, carving out a name for yourself among the stars. To become a titan of industry, amassing wealth, power, and prestige as you rise above your rivals. Or, to prove your worth in combat, cementing new alliances and vanquishing your foes on your path to glory. For the rare few, immortality awaits. With Air's Capsuleer training program, you become the architect of your own destiny. Captain, I am Aura, your AI companion. I am here to help you find your way through New Eden. Welcome to the first day of your new life as a Capsuleer. I am now transferring your pod into a ship, provided by air as part of your Capsule. An unidentified communicator. Vectoring escape route. Evacuation sequence initiated. Station hull integrity compromised. So yeah, there we go. That was it. Um, what'd you guys think? 
Well, 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 we now know a bit of law, and that law is... Uh, the reason why we can see the ship in third person is because of a tiny miniature drone following us around. That is, uh, that is law development. Uh, unless this has already been known, otherwise it's new to me. Uh, I think it is previously been known, to be honest. <laughs> but, okay, so for AIR, uh, so AIR stands for Association of Inter disciplinary research. So that's a new organization that's responsible, I think, for the new uh, play experience. I mean, overall, I, I think they use some uh, uh, video footage from the past, but I think overall it's a really well-made video uh, for the new player experience. Yeah, um, it's really cool. I think it's a great like introduction to EVE. Um, I, th I think it's kind of like updated, um, you know, with the new graphics and like Aura speaking to you and it's quite dramatic. So if you noticed in that uh, scene, when he's like in the station, there's a, a new station interior and they went and they made a new station interior. So this is it. That um, is this is some, is... some. Go that on. is a new NPC station hall, or well, inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is um, this is live on CC now. There is every when when you create a new character like Amar, you depending on your school, you end up in one of three stations, right? So um, those three stations are in different systems. So um. Amar has three, Kalari has three, Minmatar has three, and uh, Galante has three. So uh, in those systems now is an air station. And on that air station is, um, or it's got a new uh, exterior model. It's got a new interior model. So if I just switch over here, um, this is me currently on CC. So they actually went and made the graphic for the video and then they went and made these station interiors as well. So this will be tied into the new player tutorial, I guess. You know, once you uh, finish that cinematic, you end up in a, a nice new tutorial. Uh, once you finish the tutorial, I imagine it'll send you back to this air station. Um, it's cool. It's kind of like, reminds me of the new Jita. Yeah, so the new station is on grid with like the old one uh that used to be in the system so that one is still there so right now well it, what what happened before it was in the new starter system there's only one npc station uh but right now they have two so the old one and the new one here but both of them are on grid with each other and the new one uh the, the interior i think it's the lay the layout i think is somewhat copied from jita so the new jita interior setup so you can see like you have a support in the middle and it's like kind of hollow like uh around the around it and there's like a wall thing uh going around it too so i mean i think overall it looks really cool but here we come to the uh, thing was ca uh, called like managing expectation for, for players right so if a new player comes in uh seeing this as their first station right and then they're going to dock up in their career agent station that's going to be a dramatic change for them at least for the art side of the uh, of Eve. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier on. It's like this looks amazing to be landed into this station on on your first day, and then you end up. So it's only the the initial like starter system. Um, these are the special systems as well. It's like you can't grief or gank in these systems. They're reserved for the newbies. But the career agent um, systems, where you know everyone will be sent after these these stations you'll get sent to your career missions and um, they'll just have the normal the normal station so i guess it would be nice if they put an air station in each one of them as well um mm. yeah but i think eventually player has to go to one like say the mp uh, the player owned structures right a retaru or like the athnor and those looks plain like they look the same everywhere <laughs> Like for yeah. NPC stations, it changes from faction to faction, but for the player ones, is exactly the same, at least interior-wise, no matter which structure you're in, right? The same uh, thing from Keystar to Athenor. You speak of managing expectations. It's 
it's to be expected because if you say go to London Euston or Birmingham International uh, train station in here in England, it looks all fancy. Everything's shiny. There's security. There's uh, all sorts of places you can go, and then you end up with to some obscure depot like Barry Links where nobody goes to, and it just looks terrible. It looks like some something out of the nineteen fifties. It's it's to be expected if you look if you start going to more obscure locations compared to a fresh new station. Um, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Uh, I guess if they update like Amar, Caldari, and Galente, and then just leave the Minotaur ones, that would kind of be fitting. <laughs> <laughs> now, these uh, air stations are there different ones per race? Faction? No, they are. No, no, they they are like their own faction, their own thing. So there's only the air ones. Um, so each of the four uh, factions has three possible starter systems depending on your your house or your uh your school you pick or whatever uh house <laughs> harry potter but um and then each of those so there's 12 of these stations in the game one for each of these of these rookie ships um ultimately as well uh what i really like and i kind of want to show off here is um I'm going to undock in a second because when you undock, kind of like the Jita, this central platform drops down. And then we can also get a nice look at the outside of the station. Um, so let me pull up the station services. So do you see the way that falls away there? How cool is that? Um, uh, and here's the neat. yeah isn't it right so like it's a pretty big like here's my Astero um, and that's the, the ship you get for, from at the very start in this new rookie tutorial you, it gets blown up it has to be blown up um, but just for scale I mean this this station it's pretty big it's kind of cool it reminds me of an old Galente one they had before which kind of had this like things coming out the side is there uh, another... i think that galante one is still in, in use right now like if you are starting one of the galante star systems and if you go to like their old station it looks somewhat similar to to this one is there another npc station in this in the vicinity of here yeah so there is um the original starter system just over there i mean it's five hundred thousand kilometers away so it's should we go over to almost on grid? Yeah, 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 I'll work over to it. So, well, this uh, this fresh new one, think of it uh, as, I guess, a massive regional uh, airport that is got a load of funding until shiny. And this ugly looking thing here is a, well, I guess one of the local ones. Yeah, it's the old Fed Navy Academy. I mean, it's terrible, isn't it? Like, yeah. Ugly. It's dark. a classic. Some people's some memory starts here with Eats. Like, this is their first ever system. And if, and if you live in Galente high sec or low sec, right, I think this type of structure, you will encounter them somewhat often, right, if you dock, if you dock up uh, a lot in NBC stations. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, the station model is even used, like, you know, as stuff in missions, um, you know, as just like filler for, for missions and stuff. Uh, but just real quick, that's the old, the old flatness. Just awful and ugly. Let's Out just with go the old to the new hot. In yeah, the let's new. go back to the, the new hotness. Um, so yeah, this is Air Laboratories. Uh, as you can see, this corp is just, it's, it's, if we look at the list of, um, stations it's uh, one in every one of the the starter kind of rookie systems yeah todaki kisogo uh semi i, I remember semi I remember yeah being, yeah uh i remember making my way from semi all the way to a no block staging and because i didn't know how to untick certain routes i ended up going a very long only high sec route 50 something jumps but i remember semi all right i still have stuff there do you still have stuff there do you yeah i still I th yeah, I still got a few items in semi from when I first started. 
If you want, you can contract to me. I'll move him to Jita for you, buddy. After Pogvin swallowed up a few systems, uh, you're not putting that one on me. Eh, no, no, seriously. I'm not going to run off with your stuff. You're you're a better PvP pilot than I am. You'll track me down and kill me, no problem. <laughs> I know that much. Um, so yeah, this is just like, again, uh, these are just on CZ. So this is going to be where all the, the new players entering EVE will have their first experience of EVE. Um, these new air stations. And like, they've put a lot of effort into this air stuff already. I don't think this is going to be uh, the last we see of it, right? Brave New World. Yeah, Does absolutely. it have a docking animation? Uh, let me get in close and dock. I'm like 40k off. I imagine it's totally the same. Well, I wonder if there's going to be some sort of... Yeah, we saw an animation where it went down and you're out, but I wonder if there's an animation for when you come in and it comes back up. We'll find out now. There should be. Because, I mean, you always kind of load into the station. Look, all the lights are red. And it is, I think it is coming up to meet me. I actually can't zoom out. Oh, yeah, look, that all popped up. Yep, it does. Um, You actually can't zoom out there. All you can do is look around. But that definitely came up to meet me at the end. So cool, like this is great. I'd love to see more of this stuff. Um, give us something that looks like even half this cool in some other stations, some like high sec, low sec, null sec. And I think Shane Maker made a really good point. Like it'd be great to be able to have a selection of interiors for Citadels or even be able to put like your corp logo. Like imagine yeah. like, like, if, like Shane, you're an AOM. Imagine up there if you could have like the AOM logo and stuff. I mean, so on structures, you do have your alliance logos on there with just no structure skins. I think that's something people demanded for like a long, long, long time. You know, and also like I... the, the, the interior of the structure doesn't change, like no matter in Athen or we're in Keepstar. But what it changes is if you dock up or if you switch to a super capital, no matter if it's a, no matter if it's a super carrier or a Titan, the interior will change, right? So. That experience is really awesome because that means you now own a super capital. You know, I have a neat idea. And if they start putting banners and logos upon these walls, I'm going to create a slightly transparent logo that looks like, I guess, uh, a large hole in the wall or some sort of break. And then if the banner gets plastered up there, it'll blend in with the wall and look like it's been smashed up. I think that would be a neat alliance logo. If I'm gonna once made if they ever go through with that. Uh, yeah, that that's is a... that's amazing. <laughs> that is brilliant. Um... Also, back to the topic of managing expectations. Uh, so players do start out with Astero. I think, like Abby said, and Zawan gets gets destroyed. A lot of people, I think, will go look for that ship. Right? That looks that ship is uh, looks awesome. I have to say, uh, Astero one. Of, I think best looking for kids. And uh, and then they go go to Jita, right? See how much is this Astero? About like I don't know, 70, 80 mil, something like that. And then and they say, how much do I have right now? Five mil. Well, a, a, a big way to go, I think, for a lot of them. Yeah, um, I, I think you're half right. I think one, it also could be a goal, but um, with the new Eve Academy and like the like the video about wormholes and exploration. It actually isn't outside the realm of possibility for a new person to get a tech one free get go exploring and come back from low sec or null sec with a couple of hundred mil after a week or two. Well, it's, yeah, it's a big goal. And the Astero, I think it is a good new player ship. It's got everything that a new player needs. It's got drone damage, always a safe option. It's got resistances, it escapes, it's got utility. It's got a very bizarre configuration, which gives plenty of luxury for the mid spots and such. I think putting players in the Estero, there's worse ships you can put them in. Completely agree. And for this new look of this new new player experience, um, I think going with the Estero was a great choice. Um, 
because also what I like about it is, is this, this tutorial happens to you irregardless of what faction you are. So otherwise they'd have to write it with like a, a Minimitar frigate, a, a Galente and a, a Mar and Kaldari, if they were to give you just a tech one frigate of your race. But at least this is like, you know, these faction pirate ships, they're kind of neutral in that sense. And Sisters of Eve, um, and you know, I know it has Amar and Galente bonuses, but I always look at it as uh, its own thing. It, it's a Sisters of Eve ship. If anything, it could also attract people into, I guess, doing the Sisters of Eve missions and art, which is new player friendly. That's a very good point. Yeah, the Sisters of Eve epic arc that's like generally. You know, the, the rule of thumb is like you start Eve, you do the career missions, you do the Sisters of Eve epic arc, and then you have like some experience, some decent money, and you've you've uh, seen the, the universe a bit because the, the Sisters of Eve arc takes you around. Um, but yeah, I like it. I think I think it'll help. I think it looks amazing. And hopefully if it gets um, even more people to try Eve or to stick with it a little bit, I think it'll be a success. Yes. Uh, what other things have happened uh, today? Okay, so um, what else happened today? Uh, this actually wasn't exactly today. This was like yesterday. Uh, there was a, um, a fight um, between Magla, MGLA, and Wolves Among Strangers in the Magla uh, home wormhole. Could you chip that up onto your screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll throw it up on... Um, I got the kill board up there in one sec. So this actually... Last week we had... Oh, an no, the, I still don't see it. I only see a... a yeah, no, I'm, I'm grabbing it. Yeah, I'm grabbing it. Uh, last week there was actually kind of like an eviction attempt on Magla and they were able to repel the attackers, I believe. Uh, I'm open to correction that, but I believe they were fine. Um... Still, I'll try to pen down a few guests to talk about like what happened in the last month in uh, Wormhole Space because there's been some cool stuff. But this, we were only talking about Magla. Uh, Aramis mentioned them a week or two ago. They do fantastic videos. Um, so this was like just a brawl. Is this? Um, yeah, this is just a brawl yesterday. So uh, what was among strangers roll into them? They lost the Zirnitra, which. Um, if you don't know, is it Triglavian Dreadnought? Uh, the the total destroy there is a little bit off. Uh, anyone want to tell me why the total there is a little bit off? I'll take this. The the Zenitra is real value, and it's I don't I don't want to make any assumptions on the value of the Zenitra, especially with the whole industry changes that have happened, scarcity which kicked off a while ago, and the rather bizarre way of how the Zenitra generally gets its blueprints distributed and not to mention half these modules on the Zenitra they're abyssal so nobody knows what their true value is unless somebody were to start taking screenshots of the, of the abyssal modules and only then somebody would have to find an appraiser and then find somebody who, who would actually be willing to buy it for it to be assigned any kind of value it's a they're not seen that often for various reasons. So the Nitra, so the, the Nitra BBC can be, I think, uh, traded with ISK and some items in Potriven LP stores. So I think in theory that it is possible to produce them on mass scale if people are willing to put into the manpower uh, and the effort into it. So, so it's not as rare as other like faction uh, Dreadouts or faction capital ships. This is, I see, this is a uh, C5 wormhole, and I'm not seeing any effects, so this was just a, I guess, a vanilla straight fight between well, two different sides. Yep. Um, the oh, the actual. MGLA fielded as a nature of their own, along with yeah, their was... additional dreads. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to point that out. So another thing is the fact that they dropped as in each of themselves a lif, two phoenixes. Now, I actually don't want to play this on screen because to play this on screen would not actually be doing it justice. But we do have a video. So I'm going to drop this in the in the Twitch chat. 
Um, it's it's an amazing amazing fight to watch. Um, it's twelve minutes long, uh, but really you have to kind of watch it yourself. We can just can we put it uh, on a two X mode? Yeah, yeah, we can we can do something here. And, uh, knock the audio off in case there's music, please. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There is absolutely. Well, I I we can speculate on why the Zenitra is not very, uh, seen very often, and I do have a good reason for it. Uh, do uh, good proposition. The problem with the Zenitra is it's a Triglavian ship. It's a Triglavian dreadnought, and dreadnoughts are usually used in dread bombs, hit and runs. And the problem with uh, Triglavian ships is it has to build up to do damage. So if you're dropping a well Zenitra, you're it takes time to build up that damage, time that you might not necessarily have, especially in a large fleet. Fortunately, this is wormhole space, so guaranteed backup is uh, not guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Um, go on, sorry. And, uh, well, as with wormhole space, there are no super capitals there, so a super capital cannot arrive on grid to instantly kill a dreadnought or vaporize a dreadnought that you could do in Nullsec. So, uh, to my knowledge, the strongest ships that a wormhole group can field is a faction uh, dreadnought of any kind. This would include the Zenitra, but also would be the Kemosh, the Kaiman, and the... Don't even remember the, the other one. I, I don't own the capitals. Shen, do you remember the third uh, one? The v Vehement. V vehement. So the yeah, vehement. those... Uh, v vehement. So... Uh, yeah, faction dreadnoughts because of uh, how wormhole space works and the fact that they are the largest ships you can generally field inside of a wormhole and compared to carriers which have which are a bit different faction dreads are the flagships of the wormhole crowd and also so the special thing about the nature first of all is it's expensive so again this goes to any faction capital ship that has siege or triage which is if you feel them on grid usually it requires that siege or triage mod to be active in order for it to really make any sort of um application uh, or make any sort of effect so therefore you're tackled you're self-tackled for that five minutes which means that everyone else on the other team can basically focus fire on you and you only have your own uh, local rep. That means you cannot be repped by any sort of logic, right? No matter it's fa uh, capital or not capital ships. So therefore, it looks really bad on the ISK side if you're the one who's f fielding uh, the capital, uh, capital uh, f uh, the faction capital ships. And also the thing with uh, the, the Mitra's entropic, I think it's called entropic degrader, I think. So that thing, it has no... Uh, capital or hover gun so it's just one weapon that means it applies to sub capital as well as ca to capitals so that means it has really deadly damage to some sort so to be to be honest any sort of sub capital ships for capital ships uh if it doesn't ramp up there is some lack in damage for sub capital ships it's really really deadly does it actually apply to sub capitals or just barely uh, so I think once uh, I think I saw someone did a test with uh, um, a, paladin, a paladin, which is a marauder in, oh, in on, action dude. mode, which means that doesn't really count. But I, I think count. it applies decently well. Uh, All right. Uh, since since the, the unique thing about in, uh, the gleaming weapons, right? They, they, oh, yeah. it, it always um, it, it, it always track. I think. Yep, sorry, one sec. The uh, screen share right. went down there. Uh, um, so that's anyway the the one thing I love about the uh, that video is like, please watch it yourself. Like, when, watching it on this stream isn't going to do it justice. But it's actually um, it's from Wolves Among Strangers, the people who lost the Zenitra. So, um, like, shout out to them for like filming their fight and getting it, and then like coming out worse off in the fight. And then still posting a fantastic video to YouTube for all of us to enjoy. So, um, you know, like a lot of times if I had a video of myself and, and I lost that, I, I, would, I would be a bit hesitant to post it. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Check it out, guys. The Battle of the Zenitra. It's there in the chat. Um, 
really, really worth a watch and check out some of the other Wolves Among Strangers videos and also the Maglo videos because they're really cool. Um, speaking, let's just stay with like the same topic for a little minute. Um, Inner Hell. Inner Hell is a group. Inner Hell? <laughs> oh, actually, can I introduce this? Oh, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm I'm passing it to you, please. All right, all right. Inner Hell, uh, led by, uh, I believe his name is Max, although uh, Adramalef, was the terror of Wormhole Space. They were one of the biggest and most powerful, most feared Wormhole groups in EVE. Uh, they were uh, friends with Hard Narcs, they were friends with Laserhawks, they were part of the big evil uh, Wormhole Council, the, uh, the Wormhole Blue Donut. And... They absolutely terrorized the enemies throughout the many years they existed. I do remember when I was in test, they would anybody any time somebody saw inner hell in the Intel channels, everybody knew something was going to happen. A big fight was going to happen. Some some people may feed. Somebody wanted the wormhole rolled. They were that terrifying to a lot of. They were able to challenge an OSAC groups because of just the sheer power of their. Uh, Loki Doctrine at the time. Unfortunately, there was a joke about Inner Hell at the time, and the joke was Inner Hell is only three people on a Discord ping. That's all they were. And while it starts off as a joke, it sadly turned out to be true. Inner Hell was really mainly run by three people, and two of those people went AFK, and that left it all on Adralem, Dramalef, Max, and he addressed it in his farewell speech when he disbanded the alliance he talked about how it was putting too much stress on him to run everything to run the scouts to roll the wormholes to find things to tackle and kill and to call people in and in his final address he, he reflected on it. he told them you know there's 60 80 people in the in our team speak in our discord in our channels and when i pinged for somebody to help me roll it, i got nobody to help me so he was just frustrated and he disbanded the alliance in 20 sometime in 2020 sure. anyway they they were just terrors to behold because once they entered your wormhole they were really good at holding it they held it 24 hours a day seven days a week they will hold uh, whole control and i i myself experienced this when i fought against uh, when i fought alongside beyond the breach at the time and help tried our best to help them defend against uh, laser hawks hard knocks and inner hell but sadly uh, there was no way we could overcome them so that's yeah. a bit, bit of a short history on uh, the powerhouse that uh, was inner hell they were a russian speaking uh, c2 wormhole group that disbanded because uh, and splintered because of the fact that it was just too much burden on uh, too few individuals to keep everything running but it seems uh, now they're back. Yeah, so that's a, I think it's a pretty good uh, description of them, and and I hope I hope the fear and terror in your voice there kind of came across to some people because like they they are uh, yeah they are I guess because they're back now they are uh, quite a menace in in wormhole space, and you're dead right a lot of people would would just see them see, see them jump in a hole, um and just say no I'm done I'm out roll the hole dock up like run run away um i mean just just an example here is a battle report pulling up naglfar just a bunch of dudes in inner hell with Drex and ecoterses um so yeah so it, i i don't know why they're back maybe we'll have to uh Get them on for a little interview or something. Try and find out some of their story, what's going on. But like, unfortunately, to my knowledge, um, Adremlef, uh, he's not that great at speaking English. So, but I would uh, hope to uh, see them. Well, I'll become active and see what they do next. I do remember uh, just checking up on the dates. Yes, the twelfth of July was the day they disbanded in twenty twenty. They had a keep star, one of the few keep stars inside of uh, a wormhole inside of a C2 wormhole. I think it's they've got... At the time, there were only two keep stars inside C2s, and they had the... one of the two. And nobody could evict him to hell except themselves. And so they did. And they destroyed their own keep star. But now they're back. 
we can see the numbers 39 characters 203 kills they're back yeah and, they are and i think they are already setting up to evict a wormhole right now they are apparently evicting some c2 with a red giant so well we'll see how that goes and the terror they'll cause soon i certainly wouldn't want to be on the other side of inner hell um yeah well i'm I'm curious if they're going to open up uh international bleh, international recruitment because i did remember they were trying to make a u.s uh, well, english speaking part before they disbanded would you join would you go back into the wormholes i'm already inside of a c2 wormhole so i'm um, a little bit scared oh when did you i thought you were roman and low sec mostly uh Low sec, high sec, anywhere there's content. But uh... all right, all right. <laughs> My apologies. We'll, we'll we'll catch up and have a chat after this show. Well, on the topic of low sec, has anything happened there? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, earlier on today, we just had a a bit of a short stream. There was um, talk of of a big fight going down. Um, I'm hearing it for some side. So I'm I managed to get a camera over there, but unfortunately, I just just missed some of the action so we only caught the tail end of the um of the fight but there is like a little 30 minute um stream up if you want to watch it on our on our twitch there was a fight involving nc dot and some allies so pandemic legion pandemic horde um i think wreck oh, let, let me get the battle report up as well um versus wow. a so here we are so like pandemic horde nc pl reckless now i mean he, here the numbers get quite small you know 10 brave 10 reckless one test um and on the other side was i mean a large contingent from dark side it was a dark side fortizer in the in the low sex system of mala uh just close to jita could you zoom in on that stuff I... oh sorry yeah, yeah my apologies let me zoom in there there we go. Mela, Horde, NC, P PL, and their vassals, or whoever is yeah, standing yeah. along. Darkside, Darkside fielding 112. Ooh. So the fort was actually, um, it uh, on the stream, I didn't know it was just like some one-man all-corp, but it's it's a Darkside corp. Uh, I've since been informed. Um, I mean, Volta was another large contingent um, that was helping them, and again, uh, Goonswarm. And a couple of little, you know, small numbers of a uh, quote and seven sins. But um, there was a fight over the, this Fortizar. The the shield was already hit. It was the the armor timer. Um, the I think it was like Pandemic Horde and the smaller groups were able to bait out uh, Dark Side and Volta and some goons into taking the fight. As soon as they took the fight, the big boys jumped in a silly amount of supers, titans. Um, as you can see here, just all the avatars. Not just uh, avatars, two two Molochs. Two Molochs, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, I got that on stream, there's two Molochs. I guess they, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Are they seething? Are they, they, they must be really wanting to bring out the toys now that the war's wound down and there wasn't some grand finale. That's exactly what I thought as well when I said it. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess they knew they weren't going to get counter dropped. I was kind of hoping for them to be counter dropped. That's why I even bothered to get a camera there. But um, unfortunately, they weren't contested. So everyone got so sick of not using their big toys for the last like six months of the war being cooped up inside. Just watching goons running around outside them while I couldn't undock. And uh, yeah, they brought out the big toys. Uh, there was some decent subcap fleets as well. But in the end, the... Uh, there was a fight that we just missed. We got there at the end to capture um, the the supers and titans taking out the fort, and the hull timer is set for a couple of days. This is a picture of uh, the fight at the time. So we have like the big um, big titan super ball up top. It's the fort down here, and this is the um, the defense fleet, the the defenders, Volta and Darkseid. Is another works. shot there. God, I, I haven't seen... Uh, Rokes. 
I do remember they, they did use Rokes quite a bit in some of their past fleets, but I haven't seen Volta run Rokes uh, recently. I hear they're good for structure defense, though. Yeah, uh, I don't really fly Calari ships, to be honest. That's just <laughs> I'm awkward like that. They're decent ships, though. I mean, you could do a lot with them. Smart bombs, countering like their, their brick tanky, decent engagement range. Yeah, also those Praxis, they're artillery fitted. So I think it's armored fit, same as the uh, TFI on grid. They are, they're all like armor and uh, artillery, 1400 artillery fitted. Uh, with the fit on the Phoenix and basically all the factors, they're really, really good fit. Uh, so if you look at it, they're all like faction and basically T2 fitted. So T2 guns and faction wrappers and like dead space uh, shield boost amplifiers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, to break down the, uh, the dark side side, fantastic showing for dark side, 112 pilots. There was a a good squad of 46 from Goons. Uh, now, I think Quote works closely alongside Volta. I think Quote is Russian, so Volta and their friends brought along uh, some forces. I think, to my knowledge, Bright Side of Death and My Little Pony Industries are both affiliated with Dark Side, or at least they live in very similar space. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think it's a good assessment. I believe um so since since the war in the south east southwest, my apologies, uh has when when that was on, um I think Darkseid started to like use horde that was left behind in Gemini for content and now that the war is over, people are moving back home and we saw there from uh, a couple of weeks ago the way Horde and Brave are gonna be sharing space and stuff. Um so I guess they're pushing back and now that they're home, they're they're brushing the crusties off the couch, clearing out their local area. Maybe they didn't want this this fort to be online and low sec nearby, so people couldn't stage uh, to attack them. Um, but yeah, just farming each other for content. But like, I one thing I thought was funny from looking at this uh, this team A here is like, sure the war is over and Pappy is gone, but like these these. These groups are still in communication, they're still talking to one another. Not as much as you'd like to think, because if they were in communication, surely Tess would have brought some more people. Surely Fraternity would have fielded uh, some numbers. But no, it, it seems it's just down to... Uh, they're no, no longer as in communication as much now. Well, I think Tess was busy losing Oracles this week. Um... They're, they, they've got like a standing Rorqual defense fleet now at this point. Um, seven or eight or something ridiculous they lost in the last few days. I think it's nine. Is it? Oh, lads. So I think last weekend, uh, the weekend report, we, or did we do a weekend report? I think last time was like seven and then another two lost after that. So like nine, I think, in total. Okay. Um... Yeah, and like to be honest, they haven't learned their lesson. I was roaming in our space two days ago, um, with just like a shit sub cat fleet. And we actually caught and tackled a Rourke. We weren't able to to kill it, we had to disengage. Um But like we were roaming around for like ten minutes in the two systems next door, clearly in Intel channels, and we still managed to to tackle a Rourke. So I don't know, guys, like keep your eyes on the screen. This is this is what happens when you demobilize your forces. When they return back to civilian life, they and non-war time, uh, I guess, mindset, they go back to their old habits. They go back to dying in really, really stupid ways. Hold up, one second. I mean, also, also you have to think like a lot of players. I think during this year, I mean, this war lasted for years. So a lot of rogue pilots may be new pilots too. So they That's may not point. necessarily have the, have the experience of, uh, like experience local pilots of when to turn off your uh, uh, industrial core, and when to like say start to call for help, and and when to uh, push your panic. Well, that's depressing. They're being found by fraternity. I do so, understand yeah. that fraternity are leading, uh, sending out a lot of whaling fleets now that they are. Then they're, they're free of certain requirements and 
blues and such. So now they're sending out a lot more, I guess, assault fleets to go whale on something. Yeah, so just looking there at losses, in, in the space of one day, uh, test lost seven Rorquals. Um, two days later, they lost, or yeah, sorry, a few days later, they lost another two. But in the space of a week so far, they've lost nine Rorquals. Um, and only, only just today, if we scroll up here to the top, Brothers of Tangra, that is the NC dot. Uh, renting Alliance that rents in Malpay, they lost five Rorquals um, to Goons and the Initiative. And not a fraternity, Rorquals was lost in Vale to, to Goons. Um, Goons lost two here to NC yesterday. But I mean, uh, there's a third one, a fourth one from Goons. So, Rorquals we'll save pilots, are, sorry, Rorquals we'll save FCs are hopefully now in demand yeah <laughs> i'll drop the i mean for... yeah that you know I, i'm i'm a little bit sad to hear that because after all this war after all this fighting all of these fcs who've bloodied themselves and proven themselves and distinguished themselves now that they've been demobilized you save raw course you save people who that's your job now <laughs> after all this fighting after everything you've done you're back to saving Rorquals. Um, I mean, to some degree, you can see like how unsafe it is right now to use a Rorquals. Um, I mean, it, it, it does take a lot of work to, uh, for example, scout out uh, the I think, regional jumps. So like a few jumps away, you have to make sure there's no wormhole that you think is dangerous that war can be rolled. Right? So you roll all those things first, and, and then you make sure you have enough cap batteries, you, you make sure all your uh, shit is ready, and then you start to mine. So it is a lot of effort in order uh, to pilot a Roku nowadays. I mean, Abby, we're, you... with the amount of deaths that we're seeing, that it, it is not safe, I can say. To, Abby, can to you pilot show me the... Oh. Abby, can you show me the carriers? The regular carriers? Just regular carrier losses? Yeah. Regular carrier losses. I, I'm curious to uh, how how many carriers are being lost now that a lot of the carriers that were previously repurposed for war are now turned back into uh, workhorses. Um. Uh, you go into the van search and search carrier, and it should be carrier group. No, no, just a regular search. Well, we can now see... Well, aside from the NPC losses, which is r rather pathetic... How do you... Sorry, sorry now. Sorry now. Fraternity. Click, click on this that, that's uh, issue, yeah. yeah, so sorry, we're looking at a Sky Firmament Knight here who lost a Nidhogger in, in low sec to a, to an NPC. That's fine. Uh, okay, sure. if I'm not wrong, that's like level 5 missions and he got tackled in the mission, he, he wouldn't get out. Overwhelming amount of DPS. Yeah, tackled by what? NPCs? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, well... I mean, okay, this is capital. This is not super capital, so you don't have that warp core strength that you get as a bonus Shen, to your ship every level that, of... Uh, Shen, is that Thanatos, Kata Wang, you? What about it? Is that you? Is that you, is that you there in, in Army? No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. But, uh, you, yeah, we can now see the carrier... Uh, people losing carriers is uh, back now back to normal. Uh, hold on there now, yeah, that was just yesterday. That was in it coming through there with a Draugr fleet catching an army of mangoes riding carrier. Uh, yeah, I guess... I mean, the the what were the... Uh, what was the joke the Imperiums were making? Like, Mother Delve is healing when all the carrier riders were coming back out, right? 
I mean, well, carrier are now more expensive than before, right? They're like I, way I, more, I, way more expensive. I don't understand why oh. if somebody would rat in the carrier now, especially I, with the whole uh, the expenses of them. Okay, carrier ratting. I think solely it is one of the most efficient way to rat. Uh, if if you consider the risk and reward, because for carrier ratting, uh, it's not as dangerous as a lot of people think. Uh, you don't have a uh, siege. If you compare to dread ratting, which means that you can basically land a line to your uh, structure, make a save like a zero of that structure. You don't put an SA on. You put a sensor sensor booster on, and then you you basically if there's a new come in, recall your fighters, warp to the safe. Sometimes don't recall your fighters, just warp to the safe. Or sometimes you literally right click your capacitor, jump to another system. There are many ways to save yourself. It's not as restrained as dread. And it is a capital ship, so you can field about a two to three thousand DPS. So um, I got a funny capital kill for you that couldn't have jumped out. This is in um, SS Gamma in the Void. This is an obelisk. <laughs> so there's a bit of a story behind this one. This guy was carrying twenty three or oh, twenty two and a half billion in his freighter, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't carry that much in a freighter, ever. Um, just a couple of small ships uh, killed them. This was actually, um, I didn't know this. Uh, one, one of the lads inside in TIS told me this, but this guy here, Marf, uh, his his alliance has declared war on the Wrecking Crew. Uh, or sorry, the Rogue Consortium, uh, which is a member of Wrecking Crew. And, and these guys, Deep Space Alliance, joined the war on the side of the wrecking crew. Um, Marf says that his guys tackled the freighter in high sec and killed it with heavy, with rapid heavy practices. They had a couple of deep space transports nearby and they looted four or so bill of the four bill that dropped or of the eight bill that dropped. Um, they managed to pod swarm the wreck, make off with a redeemer um, and most of the rest, apart from some BPCs, the only thing left was like some random uh, plastic wrap stuff that wasn't worth that much. Uh, Marf's new alliance. Um, they are actually, um, they they've been like made harassing um, wrecking crew his his job and his primary content. He used to do it back when Pravi Block was still a thing, and apparently he's famous for how persistent he was at troll toasting uh, wrecking crew sov. So he, here he is still like going after them. Um, Hilarious kill, I think, that happened in high sec. I mean, guys, don't be carrying 22 and a half bill in a freighter. Don't, I mean, don't, when, 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 uh, don't do that when your group a joins deck. a war. Yeah, what a war deck. You, you can uh, deal with war decks. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna uh, answer chat for a bit. Uh, so, an SA network sensor array it prevents you from tethering, docking, and warping. It is a carrier equivalent uh, so, of a siege module. Yeah, but the point is, but you can move. So it's not like restrain your speed. So you can still align to something, right? The whole point of carrier ratting is not to have that thing on, right? For for carriers, if you put two sensor boosters on your mid slot with scan resolution script in it, is about half of the effect of an SA, which is good enough for ratting. What other things did that uh, obelisk drop? I didn't quite see all of it. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back and take a look. Um, lots of goodies. So like lots of random junk, obviously some modules. Can we um, set by uh, value? Ooh, SP2s. A redeemer. <laughs> Can we sort by uh, ISK? We yeah, yeah. So here we go. Macarial, boom. And did drop the redeemer and oh another ISK. Oh my god. Look at right. those ships. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh, um, hold on a second. Why Why is there 300 million worth of whole, large hull repairers? It, uh, who uses hull repair nowadays? But, uh, you know <laughs> I don't what? understand that part. <laughs> that is a delicious Ooh. looking kill. Look at those ships. This is... Loki's so like yeah, uh, a small army <laughs> in here. Going. Proteus's jackpots, 
Gecko, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, a Gecko, a very rare drone, which they've only given out a handful of times. Uh, they uh, have released events. blueprints somewhat recently. The, the price has gone down. Oh, it's not that. Okay, it's 150 to 100 mil. It's not that big of a crash. My God, that's, uh, this, this man was transporting enough equipment for a small army, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Worms, and, I mean, a lot of things, yeah, a lot of things in this cargo hold can be transported in other ships, like a Sinesis or just a shuttle. Like I think it has BBCs in it or things like that. How yeah, are you yeah. gonna transport a McCarry on a shuttle? Well, okay, not McCarry, but other yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, um, also have like I mean, from the Kilmail, we we see there's a Weber uh, that it it has along the way, but it didn't help. That's all we see. Well, my suggestion to him is he may want to follow what some of the high second incursion groups do, and that is they transport their ships structure tanked with max buffer shield tank with uh, some sort of high grade implant for extra health, and then they transport the rest of their modules in an insta warp jackdaw. It's it's a crazy process they do, but that's what they do to guarantee their safety. They don't transport their ships in anything that's war decked, like this person did. He's carrying SCC encrypted bonds, so these are the items you get from hacking like uh, banks and stuff as well. I mean, you can just sell out an MP NPC station. You don't need to carry that anywhere, really. It, it, it looks like this guy's moving home like from one place to another. Like This is all the junk he has in his hangar to bring everything at once, and they're trying to move to Wrecking Crew, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that's yeah. what it looked like to me. Yeah, I mean, like a Paladin, a Redeemer, a Baragos, the Macarial, like three, sorry, three Macarials. Do you Baragos, really need Paladin. to move all of that into your home all at once? Do you really need that all at home right now? No. I mean, okay, it, it's, it's up to people, but I think one thing, though, like things like a Redeemer, yes, it's own jump drive. Maybe it's a good idea to use it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why do you need five Ishtars? Just bring one, bring two. Why do you bring need two. three Macarials? Bring one. Or two, if you need, if you're weird. So, um, yeah, like, just, I don't know. It, it boggles my mind. Um, just don't understand. Also, like, a freighter, uh, even though technically it's XL, so technically it's a, a capital ship, it has this health, I think, somewhat around a battleship, if not a bit more. So it's not as tanky as uh, other capital ships. One day I'll go dig up the high set ganking spreadsheet and find out just exactly what health that obelisk has, but not today. This character is four years old as well. And also, like, the obelisk is is the tankiest out of all the freighters, I think. So uh... maybe this is the option he chose, but he should have bring full bulkhead on it. But yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he he needed those uh, those tech two expanded cargo holes to to be able to carry his materials, his bar guys, his pallet, his retainer. <laughs> Weird, I don't get it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's got to be like one of the worst awful losses of the week. So, congratulations to Marf in his campaign against Wrecking Crew. Long may it continue. Um, another cool battle report actually that came in this week is this one. Now. This is just straight like in it bastion goons versus fraternity. So there's a little bit of a story behind this one. And I kind of like this story. So uh, you have the bastion rock wolves here. None of them died, right? They all lived. Um, and the rest is just like a defense fleet. Munions. Of course, it's munions. Um, and just more subcaps, right? But what happened was... A spy had tipped off hunters about Rorqual's mining, and Fraternity sent their like whaling fleet, all these sabers, uh, intercept or uh, interdictors, uh, bombers, lots of bombers, and all these Kiki Moras over to kill the mining Rorquals. But in it found out and was able to intercept them on the way. And so they saved the Oracles, and basically the frat fleet got um, destroyed. So well nice. done, yeah, well done for like setting that up and like having a spy flying over, um, 
cool gameplay and then like congratulations to to i guess the imperium team for fighting them off uh, and i know you'd like that one chen so i decided to show it in for today yeah i mean always too good to good to see this kind of pr you know mm -hmm. yeah It'll be your rock one next time. Well, wow. as long as Brad is losing like that, mm, not bad. Yep. Um, I'm just going to double check. Ooh, actually, sorry, one more um, amazing loss before we sign off for the evening. Did you guys see this pop up on Z Kill? Oh my god. Oh, look, uh, Revenant. Yeah, I saw the Revenant as well. Right? I, I want to know the story behind this, and I have a sneaking suspicion. Uh, oh God! Well, I think I got by that Jason Bourne. Life. I know this guy. That Jason Bourne guy from Chongxi. Really interesting fella. Loves to bait out people. Loves to PvP and loves to drop um, his paladin on people. He's a really. He's a pretty good. Uh, PvP, -er. at least he's uh, annoying enough to kill me a few times, or kill my friends. Well, he managed to. Take I, I, I remember that Revenant for sure. Like I think once we were on Rome, I think Filament did to uh, Veil of Silent, but a fleet of I think twenty or something like that, and they literally dropped a Revenant for us. It's <laughs> like what the heck? Like we literally saw like a super carrier landed with fighters out, bombs out. It's like what? And then like, I got sent home like right away. So um. If you, if you don't know us, guys, this is a 25 bill loss. But again, again, this that's not the loss. That's not the true cost. We have heavy, uh, heavily modified with Abyssal, um, Abyssal mod. So like the Newton, the top. Um, where else? What else is Abyssal? I'll, the I'll extra large shield booster. I'll do some speculation oh, and oh. I'll say this could probably be very safely put into the 30 billion region. Yeah, which is yeah, about, yeah. about a super carrier nowadays, like a standard super carrier on contract. It's about that price. Uh, also, don't forget the pod to go with it. So not that expensive. Only another like two bill. Could have been. Could have been more. Um, yeah, Veil of the Silence snuffed out. Got his uh, marshal blown up. Um, all the Triglavian filaments didn't save him. That's a shame. But this uh this actually got us looking real quick at just like marshals. There's been a decent amount of marshals recently. This is a twelve bill one ganked in high sec. Poor guy. This looks like mission running, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It looks I'm... very much like mission running. Everything is just stable, action. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. You, you what don't was need to interesting do it. was that marshal uh, I've snuffed out before he died. Nine minutes before, he was with a small marshal squad with uh, a few people from Hard Knocks. Oh, nice. Um, one other one, sorry, that also caught our attention was this one. Uh, valued at twenty-one billion, uh, ganked in Udema. Again, like this is like. Don't be running. I, I don't know what you're doing, but like, what what are you doing? Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll say this another time. Marshall has a backup ship. He has a jump drive. It has a jump drive for a reason. In some it. places you can't jump, but the problem is you you have to sometimes you have to gate it. I would never yeah, but you, ever you, you, gate. Dama, like, I would never Dama, ever gate why? a marshal <laughs> willingly because my issue with gating a marshal is. People will gank it even if they don't make money. People will gank it just for the laughs. People will gank it just to put it on their kill board. It's just, I do not like transporting marshals or anything uh, that expensive, especially in a place like Yudama. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like, if you have to gate it, gate it on the edge of a region or something. Don't gate it through Yudama, jump around it. Uh, this guy as well, that... Um... That poor 21 billion isk Marshall was flying a 6.5 billion isk pod. What's the so, most expensive pod? It's improved implants, but something isn't right. Oh, um... Improving oh, total should be like... The yellow jacket. jacket. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you have the high-grade uh, Omega one, which is kind of expensive, too. So that's, yeah, so that's drone damage output. 
Yeah, high grade. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's only a bill. But yeah, so I mean, if, if you look at his fit, like that's all the uh, EHP fit is. I mean, with exception for the missile, but low slot, and he has amulet, which I think is the one extending your your armor HP, which means that this thing's really tanky. But at the end, he only got like seventy seven k hit points in. Do you think this is like his attempt at like a, a travel fit or something? No, this oh, is not tra- tank. This is this. Yeah, this is tanking. What do you mean this isn't travel fit? This is travel fit. fit. I mean, I this, know, is, this, is how, this is how you traveling. would move. This is how you would move a incursion of Marauder. That's pretty much how you move it. Yeah, I understand yeah, you'd use Tech 2 instead of ridiculously overpriced faction. No? And, and, and also, like, I, the fact that it's not uh, Incursion and, like, I don't know, like, usually Black Ops, they should use Jump Drive instead of... Uh, instead yeah, of well, it. sometimes you don't. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Like, I mean, if a ship has a Jump Drive, it generally has it for a reason. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be going gating, and yeah. you shouldn't uh, be gating uh, anywhere. Unless it's like, yeah, unless it's regional gate in Nolsec, that kind of big, big gate that's like ten layers apart from each other. You gate once and then you jump right away. That makes sense, but uh, I'm not familiar with sign yeah. mechanics. You can sign out in high sec, right? Yeah, you can sign out. You can jump out. You, can you jump in? No, no, we have the low sec. But like, he, there's no low sec next to you. Then he would have been jumping into. Yeah, and also with cover up signals, you don't they don't show up on overview, and you you literally jump in, hit your cloak, and that's it. You want to well, save, hit, hit your cloak. Well, you win and some, it, you lose it, some. It's not yeah. that hard. It's not that unsafe, I think, for for black ops. What other things have uh, kicked off today? Or... Um, honestly, I think that's kind of it. I think we're at the end of our list of like stuff that had kicked off. Um... Uh, also, I think this is not a good week for marshals in general, right? I think, I think we've shown that like a lot of marshals were lost uh, during this week. Uh, yeah, so so oh. for marshals, just for people who don't know, like it is a special ship. Uh, it's about I think seven or eight bill or six bill ish around that range, uh, for a haul. Uh, so you get it from Project Discovery and recruiting your friends. So you can get forty people use your referral link for Omega. You get uh, forty accounts, I would actually say, uh, to get a Marshall BBC and takes up another one billion of materials. I think now it's been more since uh, mineral changes uh, to build one. Right. And another way is to reach 500 level on the project discovery, you get a Marshall BBC as well. So those things are, are takes a long time, which means that the price of a Marshall is really, really high. Well, the, the Marshall, despite its all its weaknesses as a combat ship itself, it's by the way, the Marshall is not that great for actually fighting somebody who wants to fight back. It's it's a bit of a hit and run ship, like all Black Ops ships are. But it's uh, despite its all its flaws, it excels at what it does because it's in such a unique position with its bonuses. Yeah. So, Sorry, so the um... unique thing about Marshall, uh, just one last thing, is its bonus to repping. So I think other than Marauders, in terms of battleships, they are one of the. Uh, there, I think they're the ships that can rep the most uh, compared to ships uh, compared to battleships that are not Marauders because it's a fifty percent bonus for your from your security status. Like the um, and like the Praxis, it has a mad slot layout as well. All right, do you know what I mean? It's got like... yeah, yes, eight mid, eight low, I think, and seven high. Yeah, yeah. Like no yeah, downtime, just... huh? Yeah, sorry, um, I can't believe I missed this. Just w- w- one last thing before we sign off. This is going to be the second time where they are going to attempt a no downtime test. So what that means is there's a great uh, blog about it and. To accompany the blog is actually a video. Let me pull that up um, again. Don't I won't, I'm not going to play it out on stream because I'm just not going to do it justice. We should just all go watch the video um, ourselves that CCP put out. But um, so this is going to be Thursday. So I mean, depending on when you're listening to this, it might have already happened. 
it might have yet to happen. Um, it, I I don't know when you're listening to it, but on Thursday, oh, the... no. is that is he in front of a volcano? He is. Hold up, I'm still I'm getting a link. I'm getting a link. Um, and I'll drop it in. I'll drop it in chat here for for everyone watching in in chat. It's three minutes, three and a half minutes. Uh, so that's the video, and here is the guide to the actual blog itself. So this is Thursday, the what tenth? No, the ninth. Thursday, the ninth of September, uh, at eleven o'clock. Uh, UTC, whatever that is in your own region, we will have no downtime. So guys, if you're going to be moving Titans, if you're going to be moving Supers, if you're going to be moving Marshals, and you're hoping for downtime to save your ass, uh, it's it's not going to happen. Um, so basically, they've done this before. And they did tests. They like found things that were like memory leaks, things that needed to be reset. Um, this is just kind of like a big nerdy one going on about the numbers. Yeah, and just looking at fixes, right? Memory usage, things like asteroid bells getting reset, combat sites getting respawned, um, things like uh, escalations, I guess, whatever, right? And they have to test that all this stuff works continuously through and no downtime, um, where they traditionally do all these resets and clearing out the the backend databases and stuff. Um, so that will be tomorrow or the next day for you, or maybe it already happened yeah. if you're listening to this late. So that'll be like 10 hours after, or eight, I think I should say nine hours after this recording uh, of this episode of TIS. Yes. Uh, so we'll yeah. see it really quick. Yeah, so for tomorrow's show, I think we can do somewhat of a uh, review of, of of the day or of the no downtime uh, experiment. Yeah, yeah, and how it went and see if anyone lost anything or... Um, it'd actually be interesting to see around that time if there's like any big losses from people who didn't get the memo. Yeah, so I think last time they tried it, it was kind of horrific. I don't know if that's an accurate ac- accurate word to describe it, but a lot of things did go really, really badly. So we will have to wait and see. I mean, they they did say uh they they fix a lot of the issues, or I think almost all the issues that were reported. Uh, but. If, if there's something new that can come up, we don't know. So I think we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, um, but I, I think it's really cool. Like, I mean, they've talked about a long time about moving to this future of having no downtime, how daily downtime is like, I mean, depending on where you live, it can be like bang in the middle of your gameplay. So like you can't even go on a fleet or you have to plan your fleet around it uh, or it might happen when you're in work or asleep, you know, things like time zone tanking, how would have the battle of M2 played out without without downtime? Um, but I think CCP are kind of committed to removing downtime as much as possible. Maybe if we only had like a weekly downtime or something. Ooh, that, this will affect the gameplay of uh, certain people who can play sex system. So I think it, I wonder if it will affect Ivana. And that's all I can think on that. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll have to see how it plays out. Hopefully, hopefully the game still works tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> don't undock it. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. We don't know, right? Hey, it's a good time to undock I mean, it. it is, if well, anything I, goes wrong, you can on. apply. If you can go petition it. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, maybe it is time to move your marshal. So if it gets blown up, you can blame it on the server. <laughs> I wouldn't risk it. Yeah, I mean, traditionally downtime is related to a lot of things. Um, so one thing I think you said is reset of escalations. Uh, so for people who are curious, uh, who haven't done a lot of escalations, so if you have an escalation, you run to the last room, and then you go scan whatever the boss is. Maybe it's a structure, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, ba- a battleship. You scan it, and then you will show the amount, the amount of loot that you have. And if it's a really crappy one, uh, right, let's say just only overseer effects, what you do is you warp out. So the fact that you didn't kill the boss, it, the site is still going to be there. But after downtime, you set it, the site is going to be reset, which means that there'll be a new loot that's going to come up, not the one that you scanned before, which means that people can uh, have a lucky bet saying that, or hoping that that would be better than whatever they got 
previously, right? If you only have overseer effect in it, there's nothing to lose because you always get an overseer effect. Maybe this time it's going to get, let's say, an X type wrapper. So, uh, so that's the thing with overseer effect. If they're going to extend this, uh, stock up on those uh, dead space modules before they go up in price. There's, uh, there's your tip for today. I mean, that is true. That that's is a true. very good tip. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Well done. I didn't even think of that. I was sitting there thinking, God damn, I need to go join AOM so I can farm all these dead space. I mean, I, mean I don't think that I make a living is escalations. So, I mean, people do farm escalations and this is one of the ways to farm it. Uh, but yeah, it does a lot of money uh, with escalations. That's cool. Um, but yeah, look, so I think that's the news. Uh, I think that's all the news uh, we have for today. Be careful out there in nine hours time when there's no downtime. Um, be careful out there flying your freighter with all of your life's goals and worth inside it. And be careful gating your Marshall True high sec because it has a jump drive. Um, Shen, any last words? I, I think that's all. I mean, I, I would like, oh, very much like to see a big, big free action tomorrow and try to stress out the server and see how he performs with big, big tie even no downtime. Maybe that's a good uh, test for CCP, right? But uh, I mean, that's all on, on luck. So I, I think we'll just wait and see. What about you, uh, Rich? I swear to God, if you t stress out the service and I can't do small gang, I'm clicky camping you for a week. You see what it's like. <laughs> Thanks, CCP. We have something called a mobile observatory. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, listen, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching. Uh, fly safe, fly dangerously. Uh, don't undock at all if you're a market trader. Uh, good night.